If you're on Google My Business and you're confused, like a lot of people are, about service areas versus having a physical address, you're not alone, and I'm gonna cover all the finer points of this starting right now. If you wanna transform your website into a customer or lead generation machine, I'll show you all my best tips, tactics, and secrets to get there fast. Let's dive in. Hey there, Wes McDowell here, web strategist for The Deep End, and if you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel. So go ahead and click on the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it so you never miss another video you need to succeed online. So without a doubt, my most popular little series of videos all involves uh, getting set up on Google My Business, specifically how to rank in that three pack or the map pack in a Google search. In fact, chances are pretty good that that's the video that you found me through. So uh, one of the biggest common themes I get in terms of questions on those videos has to do with, you know, do I put in, what I'm a service business, do I put in a physical address or do I check the box saying that I deliver goods and services? People have lots of questions like, you know, I work from home or I have a big service area. Why should I only be found by people that are close to me when I can go out all these different places or it may not even matter because I just help people remotely from home. And there's a lot to unpack here. So what if you do work from home and you don't want to publish your home address? You know, maybe you just don't want it out there for people to see. Maybe you're, you're afraid of customers actually dropping in on you. I've had that happen to me uh, when I used to live in LA. I worked from home and I just had that on my website and my Google My Business and there was two occasions where someone just knocked on my door. I don't know who was like just knocking on their web designer's door, but that's another story. I mean, that generally doesn't happen, but the point is it could happen if it's there. So does not putting your address affect your ability to rank in the map pack? So in this video, I want to address all those questions and concerns, uh, shed a little light on the whole subject of service areas versus putting in your physical address, what's involved, uh, as well as at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you some of my best tips and advice for how to stack that deck in your favor to rank in the map pack, even if uh, things seem to be stacked against you. So that's coming at the end. So not to get into a whole history lesson here, but Google basically used to treat every business, every local business like a bowling alley or a McDonald's, you know, basically just showing the closest option uh, to people searching for a given topic. And that's kind of all they would do is show the closest. Um, now they're starting to get a little smarter and they're seeing what types of businesses it's really important uh, to show the closest results and what businesses are not so important to make proximity such a factor like those service businesses or businesses where you travel a broader area to customers. Now notice I said smarter, you know, they still have quite a ways to go. They now give you the ability to basically set a service area um, that'll show up in that knowledge panel on the right when you do a Google search for your business, basically letting customers see exactly what your uh, service range is. And that's opposed to uh, the way it used to be for everybody, which was basically just a map pin showing your address. However, I need to make this extremely clear. Remember how I said they still have a ways to go? This is what I'm talking about. So just because you define that border that you, you, know, that you work within does not mean that you can rank in those top three spots within that whole area. Unfortunately, they still go on proximity of your address uh, to who's searching. So then basically the main benefit of showing, having that map show up with your service area is simply to let customers see visually if you can help them or not based on where they are. So while you can't really realistically hope to rank in that big broad area, no matter where someone is, what you can still rank for is proximity searches. So you serve a whole big broad area, but you, wherever you are, you can still show up for people close to you. So one of the first things people can get really tripped up on though when they set up their listing, they'll get this question. It pops up saying, do you wanna add a location customers can visit, like a store or office? Now this is a really pivotal question, and if you don't have a storefront or a physical brick and mortar location, your first instinct would probably be to check no. And this is something only you can decide. You know, you need to weigh out the pros and cons of if you don't want your potentially home address published for anyone to find it, uh, you need to weigh that against the fact that if you don't put your address, you're potentially limiting 
your ability to rank in that three pack. So if you really wanna protect your privacy, you can do that, but you're doing it at the expense of your ranking potential, unfortunately. So if ranking in the map pack is important to you and you're not super cautious or scared about having your address shown to the public, I would check yes, and then a few steps into the setup, it's gonna prompt you to list out any additional areas you service, uh, like cities or states, zip codes. You can even do whole countries. The deep end has listed the United States and Canada as our service area. And I will tell you, I'll be honest with you, the data is a little mixed on all this stuff. So basically, I did a lot of you know unofficial testing of different businesses in different cities, seeing who's showing up in that top three. And while there's some cases where someone without an address is showing up there, overwhelmingly so, it looks like most of those top positions are going to people who have their address shown. But I would encourage you to try this for yourself and for your own category and locality. So just go to Google and type in the business type in your city and see what three businesses pop up for you. And here's how you'll know if they've actually listed their address or not. It'll have a little button that says directions. If it says that, they have listed their address. If it doesn't say that, if it just says website or, or nothing possibly, then their address isn't there. So let's say you do this exercise, you see uh, what you're up against for your, for your own business. So here's a few things. So if you see that everybody in that pack does have their address listed, you're probably gonna have to do the same just to stay competitive. Um, if nobody has listed their address, you may still want to, in order to give your business the competitive advantage to outrank them. So I promised a few tips to help you up your chances of ranking. And um, while proximity is still the number one factor, at least for now, um, there are things you can do to compensate for that if, if you know, you're in a situation where it's close. So what's the number one keyword phrase that you're trying to rank for, that people are typing into Google? Uh, is it pet grooming? orthodontic dentistry, carpet installation, whatever that phrase is, it does help to have that be part of your business name within Google My Business. But there's a big fat caveat here. So if you're just inserting that into your business name on Google My Business, but it's not really part of your business name, keep in mind, anyone can shut you down for that at any time. If anybody flags that listing and says this is not their real business name, they'll those rankings will go away overnight. And this may not be helpful for you right now. Things that could have been brought to my attention yesterday! But unfortunately, this is best done when you're starting out, coming up with your business name, so you can work it in in a natural way, and then have all your citations that are built across the web be very consistent. So rather than calling your pet grooming place Paw Paradise, you would call it Paw Paradise Pet Grooming. Obviously this works best if it can be worked in naturally like that. There are some cases where it might sound a little stilted. And to be honest with you, changing it midstream, like once you're well into your business, can be tricky. So this is definitely not recommended for everybody. You gotta do it very carefully if you're gonna do it at all. But if you have that keyword phrase, there are still other things you can do with it that are not nearly as uh, risky. First of all, make sure it appears verbatim exactly as you want it in your Google My Business description text. Next, you'll wanna make sure it appears in a headline on your website, as well as a few times sprinkled into the paragraph text of your website. And when I say website, I mean the homepage or whatever page that is the link from your Google My Business profile. Make sure your website lists your business name, address, and phone number exactly as it appears on your listing. And one really easy thing to do is just embed a Google map of your business right on your website. And keep in mind, the stuff that helps you rank organically in the listings underneath the map also help big time ranking in the map itself, like domain authority, uh, which means you need backlinks, you know? So it wouldn't be a bad idea to start a backlinking campaign, which just makes your site seem much more authoritative in Google's eyes. And if you find yourself in a situation where you're just too far away um, physically from where you want to rank in Google, you might have to consider a plan B, like kind of ditching the map as a plan and trying for the organic listings underneath, or buying your way into the map pack 
with a Google Map ad. Um, these can work much better than the ads above the map, so it can be a great option to look into. But now I wanna hear from you, and I am planning on doing a future video um, where I'm answering all of your questions, uh, you know, one after another, trying to get to as many as I can. So if you have any questions about Google My Business or ranking in the maps or anything like that, go ahead and leave them under this video. I will put together a future video where I'm answering your questions, uh, and I'll give you a shout out on that video. So go ahead and do that. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and click on the circle icon right here to subscribe. We've got lots of more videos like this, so go ahead and, you know, start right here. Start with one of these guys, and we can keep on learning together. All right, guys, I'm Wes McDowell for The Deep End, and I'll see you in our next video.